Hey everyone, welcome to Patrick Dugan Music. Today we're going to be learning the parts on a Les Paul style electric guitar. Cool, so a lot of guitars, even if it's not a Gibson Les Paul, have this have a similar design to the Gibson Les Paul. This was one of the first um, electric guitar models designed by a person named Les Paul, who was a uh, fantastic guitar player, but also he was an inventor of a lot of um, guitar equipment and audio equipment. So the parts on a Les Paul style guitar is we have the body, the neck, and the head. So body, neck, and head. On the body, we have a few things going on down here, starting with, let me actually angle this camera down, the bottom of the guitar, right, where we plug into the amplifier, this is called the input jack, and this is a guitar cable or an instrument cable that is going out behind the camera to a little, a small um, practice amplifier that I'm using. Okay, and then there are four knobs that you see here. So we have two volume knobs and two tone knobs. So each one of these pickups, these are called the pickups underneath the strings here. These are capturing the vibration of the string using a magnetic coil is capturing the vibration of that string and turning that into an audio signal. Okay, notice that these pickups are kind of fat, they're kind of boxy. These are called humbucking pickups or humbuckers because they are double coil pickups. There are two pickups in here side by side wired together that cancel out the hum that you might otherwise get in a, a Stratocaster style guitar or a single pickup um, design. So these are double coil pickups or humbuckers and each one of these pickups has its own volume and tone knobs. Cool, so the volume knobs are gonna be these two in front, and the tone knobs are these two in back. And you have a pickup selector switch up here so that you can choose whether you are using the neck pickup. You can see that this is called rhythm on my guitar. It's labeled rhythm and lead. Sorry, it's labeled rhythm and treble. Sometimes it's called lead, but rhythm and treble. So the rhythm pickup is actually the neck pickup. So when I flip this selector switch up towards me, I am engaging this pickup, which is going to be the top volume knob and the top tone knob. The tone knobs will make your your guitar sound clear and bright or a little bit muffled and dark. The volume is going to control how much signal is going out of the guitar into this cable and into the amplifier. Cool, so that was the neck pickup or the rhythm pickup with its volume and tone. Cool, so this one was the volume, this one was the tone. If I flip this all the way down, this is the bridge pickup because this pickup is closest to this part on the guitar called the bridge. Cool, the bridge pickup is gonna have its own volume and tone knob. It's the two bottom ones. If I put this in the middle, then it's using both pickups. It's using both the neck and the bridge pickup together and you, all of the knobs are working at this point. You have two volumes and two tones, so you have a lot of control over how your guitar sounds if you use both pickup combinations like that. For example, you could have this pickup turned loud and this one turned kind of soft. You could have this one turned bright and this one a little bit muffled with the tone. Or you could do it the reverse. You could have this one turned up 
And this one turned down a little bit. And you're just gonna get slightly different sounds depending on what you do. So some people like this kind of this kind of muffled sound. It sounds a little bit creamier. Some people want it to be nice and bright. So usually when I'm playing um, my Gibson or my Les Paul, I usually just have this pickup selector just right in the middle. And I'll have my tone knobs turned either way, either all the way up to 10 or maybe just up to nine. And I'll have my volumes turned all the way up for the most part. So I like to turn this pretty much all the way up and then make my adjustments on the amplifier. And then if I'm playing, while I'm playing and I'm on stage and I don't want to run back and touch the amplifier, I could then make some small adjustments over here during the song. <laughs> Of course the volumes, right, you can control how much signal you want to come through. Alright, so that is the body. We covered these knobs, volume and tone. We covered the input jack and the guitar cable pickups. These are double coil humbucking pickups, which sound great. They're a little bit more powerful than a single coil pickup and they don't hum. So this is a great design. Um, for someone who wants a just a really good sounding electric guitar without a lot of effort or fuss um, These double coil pickups Sound great kind of no matter what All right, so then moving over here to the neck we have the individual frets are these spaces underneath the strings You can see that my my frets are marked with these little kind of trapezoid inlays This is common on a Gibson Les Paul design is to have these little trapezoids in here. Um, it doesn't really matter what the design of that inlay is. It doesn't really do anything. It just kind of looks cool and it is allows you to know where on the guitar neck you're playing. Also I have the markings on the side of the neck which allow me to see it from this vantage point. So when I'm playing I don't really see the front of the guitar so much as I see this top side here. Um, and then the neck. You'll see a characteristic of a Les Paul design has this tilted neck. Um, there's a reason for that that kind of changes the tension on the strings as they come over this bend here. Um, so this is part of the design. It's de they're trying to uh, they're trying to take some tension out of the strings by doing that. Um, but you have to keep in mind that this is going to be the weakest point on the guitar. If you kind of drop your guitar or it gets knocked over on accident, it's probably going to break right here where this tilt is. Okay, and then the bottom three strings are coming down here to your tuning machines. And then the top three strings are the tuning machines up here. So the strings, right, the string number one is closest to the floor. String number six, closest towards the ceiling, and they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, six. The string names are E, B, G, D, A, E, or Everybody Goes Dancing After Eating. Cool, that's standard tuning. That's the same tuning that my Stratocaster is usually in, the same tuning that my acoustic guitar is usually in. There are other tunings, mind you, that's not the only way you can tune a guitar. Um, there are a number of altered tunings, and you can also do something called a half step down, where the strings are all lowered by one half step. Um, but we'll talk about that later. This is standard tuning. Everybody goes dancing after eating. So in order to tune your guitar, you're going to need a tuner, either a clip-on style tuner like this, I'd recommend the brand name of Snark, S-N-A-R-K. They're about $15, $20. A Snark super tight uh, chromatic guitar tuner works great. Or on your smartphone, if you want to download an app, I recommend the Guitar Tuna app, spelled like tuna like a tuna fish. It's free. You can get the free version. 
and it's a great way to tune your guitar, especially if you do not have one of these yet. If you have a clip-on tuner, great, go ahead and use that. If you don't, or if you just want to have a backup, go ahead and download the Guitar Tuna app, and let's get tuned up. So when I, when I play string one on this app, you're gonna see it's gonna light up and tell me the string name. And then it has this little kind of, um, this little meter. It tells me if I'm right on, the, right on the center line, or if I'm over to this side or over to that side. So let's, let's suppose that my string was out of tune. Right, so first of all, if your string's out of tune, your guitar is gonna sound not so great, so you're gonna know that something's wrong. And you come over here and you check this, and it's tracking over to the left. So when I look at this, it's to my left. Right, so that tells me that my string is too loose and I need to tighten it. So I'm gonna find my way down to this tuning machine, and to tighten this string, I'm gonna go clockwise, maybe just a quarter or an eighth of a turn, and then try it again. So I'm a little closer. Gonna do another quarter turn. I should say it's more of like an eighth of a turn. Let's try it again. So I'm doing small movements, trial and error. Getting closer. So I keep making small adjustments. Getting pretty close now. Another small adjustment. Now it says it's chiming. That's telling you that it's good enough. However, we wanna get that right on the money if we can. So I'm still a little bit flat. I'm gonna tighten this a tiny little micro turn. Starting to get pretty much on the money now. That's pretty good right there. And it's also gonna say like plus three or minus three in that little circle that's green there. I'm not sure if you can see it, but that's plus three cents or minus three cents. We wanna to try to get that down to zero or, or one. Plus or minus one or zero will be really close. So that's string one E, should sound like that. Cool, now we're gonna do the same process on string two B. So string two B should sound like this. It's gonna be the middle tuner on the bottom here. Right, to tighten, if you want the string to go up in pitch, you're gonna go clockwise to tighten. If you want the string to go down in pitch, counterclockwise to loosen. So when you're reading the tuner, if it's showing you left of center, then you need to tighten by going clockwise. If it's showing you right of center, you need to loosen by going counterclockwise until it says B, like boy, and it's right in the middle. Okay, string three is a G like girl. Should sound like this. You hear that chiming in the background, that means I'm in tune. Right, so string three is a G. I'm go ahead and turn that off so it doesn't keep doing that. Sounds like that. String four is a D like dog. This one is gonna be on the top now and the furthest one away from you. And what, what's happened here is that the directions are reversed. Down here, clockwise was tightening the string, counterclockwise was loosening. Up here, it's backwards. So to tighten the string, you'll go counterclockwise. To loosen it, you'll go clockwise. So again, when you play this string, I'm gonna adjust the camera again. When you play that string, See what it says on the tuner. If it's reading to the left, then we need to tighten the string to get it to the center. We're gonna tighten by going counterclockwise. If it's reading to the right, then we need to loosen the string a little bit to get it over to center by going clockwise. Use small, tiny little movements. So like anywhere from an eighth of a turn to the tiniest little amount that you can. And it should sound like that. That's a D like dog. String five is an A like apple. 
same principles counterclockwise to tighten, clockwise to loosen. String six is an E like elephant. Same thing, counterclockwise to tighten, counterclockwise to loosen. Cool, and that one is E again like elephant. All right, so all together that's E, B, G, D, A, E. You can remember that by everybody goes dancing after eating. Cool, so a quick recap on Les Paul style guitar is we have the, the instrument cable or the guitar cable and the input jack down here. Then we have the volume, two volume knobs in front and two tone knobs in back. Right? Each pickup has its own volume and tone knob. These are double coil humbucking pickups controlled by the pickup selector switch up here. All the way up is the neck pickup. All the way down is the bridge pickup. In the middle is both pickups. This is the bridge, the guitar neck, the frets, this is the nut right here, N-U-T, that lifts the strings up off the neck. The headstock, or the head. The tuning machines, or the tuning keys, or the tuners. Cool, so a Les Paul guitar will be great for just about any type of music. These humb humbucking pickups are really a better design than single coil pickups because they don't hum. So these guitars are used a lot and the, um, the double coil pickups are a little bit higher output. So that means they're gonna sound a little bit louder, a little bit more aggressive sounding. Um, and this guitar, this design has been used a lot in kind of heavier rock, hard rock, classic rock, blues, jazz, just about anything in between um, that you'd want to do with these double coil pickups. This pickup selector switch is nice because it's right here. Since, you, since each one has its own volume, you can set these at two different volumes or you could turn one all the way off. So if I turn one, one volume all the way to 10 and one of these all the way down, then I can do something like this. Whoops, hold on a second. So I'm able to kind of switch that, switch it on and off because in the middle here is both pickups and I have the neck pickup turned to zero. So the middle is going to be zero as well. And my bridge pickup is all the way on. So there is, if you're familiar with the song Ramble On by Led Zeppelin, there's a cool way you can play that where you play the first part with the rhythm pickup turned almost all the way down. And when the chorus comes in, you can flick that switch down to get a more distorted, um, brighter, louder sound for the chorus part. All right, so there's a lot you can do with a Les Paul, with a Les Paul designed um, or style electric guitar. It's a great choice for, the st for a studio or just if you had to pick one guitar to play a bunch of different types of music with, this is a good one to go with. Cool, and what I have here is called a Les Paul, Gibson Les Paul Studio, which is a kind of no frills version of this. You can see there's not a lot of fancy paint. I just have some kind of scuffs where I've banged this up, um, but works great. Um, Les Paul Studio, never had any um, problems.
problems with this guitar, done countless recordings with it, and it will keep sounding great for probably as long as I'm alive and beyond. All right, so that is the Gibson Les Paul style electric guitar. Um, thanks so much for listening. I'll see you next time.